Hey everybody, welcome to episode 107 of the Ask the App Show, where I answer your Volkswagen and Audi questions. On this episode, we talk about exporting a Mark 7 to Germany, watt boxes on a Mark 7, and will a rev limiter prevent you from money shifting? Okay, so before we get into our questions, two things I wanna to touch on real quickly. Uh, first, we have the BFI Oktoberfest event coming up. That's in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, I'll be there. Some some of the guys that work here will be there. We'll be hanging out. And we're not gonna be there as a vendor or anything. We're just gonna be hanging out with the guys, having a few beers. Uh, and so if you want to go there, we will be there. I'll make sure I link to their event information in the description where you can check that out. I think it's about two weeks away. I think it's October 14th. So. Uh, check that out. Also, second, something we get a lot of questions about that everyone's been kind of chomping at the bit for is Mark 7 uh, facelift taillights. The Mark 7.5 facelift in Europe has dynamic LED taillights. Uh, they look like this. And so we actually have uh, harnesses now developed in production. They are on the way. We're probably about two weeks out on those roughly. Uh, two to three weeks would be a safer bet. Uh, so we will have some information coming on that stuff soon. I've already shot a DIY. We already have a prototype harness ready and done. So that video will be coming. I will be shooting coding videos, talking more about that. Uh, so look for that coming soon. We will have more updates on the facelift taillights, which I know everyone's been waiting for uh, with bated breath. So with that said, let's get into our questions. Liam via YouTube says, moving to Germany next month. Time to sell my baby. Okay, so this comment was actually left and it's more of a comment than it was a question, but but he had a bunch of questions that kind of were underneath this, and it was a, around exporting his car. So I thought there was some interesting stuff around this, uh, and he was talking about selling his car from the U.S. because he's moving to Germany, and he wanted to go down the road of trying to figure out how to do that. Uh, some thoughts that I had, and some other people in the community kind of mentioned in re in regards to this was around potentially exporting his vehicle to uh, to Europe. So. Uh, that is a, probably a good possibility that it may actually be more logical and cost effective to do so because keep in mind, vehicles in Europe are, are significantly more expensive than they are here uh, by quite a bit. So cars, and I, you know, I'll just show a couple examples as to you know, some maybe US prices versus European prices, but they generally tend to be much more expensive. So because of that, it's possible that even with the shipping cost, let's say it's gonna cost you around I think around 2,500 bucks, maybe 3,000 to export a car. You will need to retrofit it to make it meet the EU spec. I don't know for sure, but I actually believe the only thing you need to do with the US car to make it meet standards for them is have European lights that allow you to have rear fog lights, uh, which obviously if you have a Mark 7, if you buy, uh, you know, let's say LED taillights from us and our harness and, our, and the rear fog setup, you can put the taillights on, coat it, everything else for somewhere around 650-ish, roughly, for everything you would need, a little bit less than that, uh, five, you know, roughly around 600 bucks uh, for everything you would need for that to export your vehicle and meet those specs, assuming that's all you need to do. I think that's the case. Uh, I'll actually link to, there's a good article that talks all about exporting vehicles and has all the details of what steps you would take to do so. Uh, I'll make sure I link that in the description. It's pretty thorough as far as what you would need to do. So just something for anybody to consider if you are moving out of state or more moving out of country to another country, see what specs you actually need to make the car meet because US cars actually meet higher uh, higher crash standards So there aren't and emission standards as a general rule. So you won't need to modify any of that type of stuff. The only thing you might need to modify would be lighting because they have different lighting in, in Europe than, they, than we do here. And I know rear fog is a requirement, at least in most of Europe. Mike via Facebook says, anyone have experience with the watt box? I've had one since my birthday in February and I'm just skeptical to install it with a stock intake manifold. Okay, so this was also wasn't a question directed directly at us, but I thought I could share with the community some interesting stuff. Uh, so, watt box so if you're not familiar with what a watt box is it, it is something that to help launch a manual car uh and so what it will do is kind of give you uh what some might call two-step or it gives you the ability to kind of rev to a certain point it'll hold at that rpm so that you can launch a car um watt boxes are great for 
uh, launching manual cars because number one, you can launch at a specific RPM, but also it can help build boost so that when you launch, you're, you're getting power quick. Uh, the problem with watt boxes on Mark 7s is that Mark 7s use plastic intake manifolds or composite uh, intake manifolds, not necessarily plastic, but essentially plastic. And because of that, they're not great under pressure that you would create with a watt box. So there's been uh, circumstances that people have gotten watt boxes in their cars and eventually they'll actually pop their intake manifold. So there's a seam that runs across, across the middle of the manifold where it'll actually split near that, that seam. Uh, and so we've, we've heard of circumstances where that happens. So unfortunately, watt boxes to me, I don't, would not recommend for anybody to ever put a watt box in their car until uh, there's a manifold that's made to withstand it, which again, you're gonna have to modify your car pretty heavily because before a watt box would make any sense you know because you don't want to run the risk of popping your manifold unless you just want to maybe keep a spare they're not crazy expensive manifolds are around i think about 200 bucks uh but i don't think you want to go through replacing a manifold just to have a watt box but that may be up to you maybe you want to track it and uh and you're willing to take the risk if it does pop gpo via youtube says isn't there a rev limiter that keeps the engine from blowing up all right, so this comment was left on a video that I recently did talking about money shifting and kind of what happens and why it happens. It's actually there been a pretty popular video so far. I'll make sure I link to it here where you can check out that video as well as in the description below. Uh, but the question is, is will, isn't there a rev limiter to prevent you from having a, uh, an over rev circumstance? So yes, there is a, a, a limiter to prevent you from over revving an engine, but the problem is that money shifting happens under different circumstances. So just a real brief overview, money shifting is what happens when you shift into the wrong gear by mistake. Let's say you go from third to fourth and then you, you're going to go into fifth and you hit third, you let out the clutch, it over revs and it blows your engine. Uh, that happens, when that happens, there's nothing that the car can do electronically to, to prevent an over rev circumstance. And the reason why is because once you let out your clutch and you're in, let's say third gear and your engine is over revving, it's a mechanical over rev and no longer a electronic one that you can close, let's say close the throttle body, which would be something that happens during track control is that the throttle body would start to, to uh, start to shut. That will prevent your engine from continuing the RPMs to rise because obviously you're not getting as much air into the engine. When you downshift to a lower gear, you're actually creating a mechanical overrev. So the engine is locked into place and the gear reduction is such that it's attached to the, to the engine and it's going to force the engine up to a high RPM and there's nothing you can do about it other than disengage using the clutch, disengage the engine and transmission together. So that's the reason why no matter what you do electronically, there's nothing you're gonna do to actually prevent and over rev in the circumstance of a money shift. So uh, in, in theory, it'd be great. There would have to be some sort of overrunning circumstance where you know there's a fail safe in place to prevent an over rev circumstance. I don't see that happening anyway, anytime soon. That those circumstances are pretty rare for them to happen. Uh, and you know they're not like a rampant issue that you would find in production cars. So thank you so much for watching episode 107 of the Ask Staff Show, where I answer your Volkswagen and Audi questions. If you have any questions or comments about the questions answered in this show, be sure to leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.